Good evening, June 27th, 2024 at 6 32 p.m. We have a quorum present for the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's a hybrid uh, meeting on Zoom and at the municipal offices. Certain meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required. Public participation provided in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20 until March 31st, 2025. So now the meeting's called to order. We read the disclaimer on that. We have present in person. Uh, Laura Pontani present. David Potter present. Adam Sokolowski present. Dave Sharp present. Excellent. All right, we have minutes to be approved from 411 and 4 and 522. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions on those or do you wanna? Take action on them or wait till the end of the meeting. I just want to point out in one section, it says I was remote, but I wasn't remote. Okay. And I think David Sharp maybe was remote. Okay. When we had. Um, Which yeah. minutes were those in? This is. Uh, May 22nd. Yeah. David Potter remote, but you were definitely here. Yeah. All right. And David Sharp, I think you were remote. Right. Yeah, I think so. But otherwise, no concerns. Maybe it's a very minor concern. And it's, but it's, but it's, maybe could remove the E from my last name. Oh, yeah. Whoever's taking the minutes. Okay. Don't want to sound picky, but just what All right. I will uh, send these minutes back for a correction that can be handled at the next meeting for the May 22nd meeting uh, minutes. Because there's the misspelling is is quite uh, quite a few spots, Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't really just for the future. I was thinking I don't really care what it says. <laughs> Well, we at some point, we, we just want to make sure that we have them yeah. good there. So I'll sure. take a motion to continue the minutes to the next meeting. So I'll, moved. I'll, okay. Seconded by David Potter. All those in favor? David Potter, aye. Laura Pontani, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. Okay. All right. Uh, we have Hampshire Lumber here. I can see them in the audience, so I'm gonna um, start um, the new business on a variance. 16 Elm Street notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 27th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. on an application filed by Hampshire Deerfield LLC for a variance for the property located at 16 Elm Street identified in the assessor's record map 168 lots 120 and 121 to allow for non-conforming setback on the southeast corner of a proposed new construction in the CI district as provided for in zoning bylaws chapter 179 section 5222 the application documents available for review in the foyer of municipal offices online at www.deerfieldma.us in the calendar event. Sure. Hoping somebody who's on Zoom, I saw Jeff who's on there from Berkshire Design can pull up. Jeff Squire, yeah, I see him on there. Can, Jeff, just are got... you able to pull up? The... I am here, yes. Would you mind sharing your screen with the plan? Because my computer seems to have frozen, even though gotcha. I have a computer. But my uh, let me see what I have that would help explain what's going on. Thank you. Um, 
Okay. Okay, Eric, I hate to interrupt you. I'm sorry, sorry but there we go. The microphone technology here is you got to be very close to it. And uh, then so everybody can hear you. Got it. That's online. That's I appreciate it. I apologize. No problem. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. So um, while we pull up the plan, oh, there it is. So my name is Erica Ryugis. I'm the architect for this project. I'm here from Hampshire Lumber. And I have Jeff also. That is, but anyway, Jeff Squire from call, yeah. Berkshire Design is also here. So we find ourselves before you tonight for a variance for a side yard setback of 10 feet. All right, I don't know if you're familiar with the history, but there was a land swap that was done with the town to, for the creation of the Leary lot, which created this situation that with the building footprint that we need for Ace Hardware and for the retail space that we want, um, we, we do need that full size. We can't cut it back and to jog at the corner also would not look very nice for our downtown street front. So we are asking for a variance on the setback, just on that tiny wedge that um, you can see he's circling that on the yeah. corner, here in the corner. It's a small amount. Um, so we can proceed with our, our plan. Now, just for reference, here. Have, we're doing about a 12,000 square foot footprint of a building. And that is uh, something that Ace Hardware asks for their retail stores. Our orange store is also 12,000 square feet, our Brattleboro store, and so is our Barry store. Our flagship store in Keene is um, much larger than that. But this is something that we're asking for because we we do need that retail space. No, I I understand that I I just you know and I'm I understand that the hardship was now created. But I thought with the land swap there was supposed to be the town was supposed to be given an easement. I, I can address that real quick too, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, Adam. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. That's Bob Waldron, building inspector, or is the town planner on? I thought he might be joining. Us. He he's also gonna. Um, address it but i just wanted to make a point of clarity at the the special permit hearing the last hearing i had believed that little wedge had swapped because david sharp pointed out it was too close to the property line right and it turned out that it didn't because it needed to go to town meeting so the town so they don't have the setback and the town does not have the right of way so that's why we're back here um, okay now is the town still going to go through the process if we grant the variance tonight to do well, the easement i'm not 100 percent sure that's where i was hoping chris would address it but i want to say that there may have <laughs> been an issue with the easement and the grant to do the right. parking lot so it's better not to oh because of the parking lot grant that all right. right. I mean, in general, I'm fully supportive of what needs to happen here tonight. I was just curious. I like yep. I, said, I thought and I spoke at the meeting that and I, I'm glad that Dave Sharp caught it, that those that issue was worked out when we granted the special permit. But apparently, yes, I, not, I thought so. Also, there's no yes. change to the design that was presented for the special permit. There's just mm -hmm. a, a now a, a legal hardship that that is created by the town um that is uh, that we can so you have a significant hardship so that we could we can i see the hardship that we can grant the variance but i was just curious on the um on i might the i might add about the easement there's an easement easement agreement that's been signed between hamshaw and deerfield that was part of the obtaining the federal grant that had to be agreed upon and official so that's been done okay um, so there's use by the town during construction and by Hampshaw of this area. Now that's maybe not the same easement. I'm not sure, but that was that was been executed. Okay. That agreement has been executed, and that was for so the town could f fulfill its obligations under the terms of the grant, the federal grant that they received. Yeah. Okay. Um, has all of reviewed the letter from the board of selectmen that was in our packet or does anybody need time to or or would like me to go through it i i'm all set i think i need to read it okay, okay. go ahead 
Yeah, and and just sorry to interrupt, but Chris Dunn has tuned in now. If anybody has any questions. What's going in behind the new building? Like what's if you walked out the back of that new building, what is that? There's back here. Yeah. It's, it, that's not it, part of the town parking lot, right? That's the parking lot. No, lot. this would be parking and access deliveries for for ham shop. Yeah. Okay. Through through their existing, you know, access on Railroad Street. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, just that, uh, and Chris, feel free to interrupt me, but just uh, we've been involved in this project for a while. And from, from what, what I understand um, and, you know, what, what has transpired is the building was proposed in this location. There was originally a setback issue that that A&R plan had resolved, um, which swapped these two small triangles of property. So all of that would have been in compliance. Um, that never that A and R plan never got fully executed by the town, so there was an opportunity to correct that. And then what prompted it was the fact that the federal grant money that was available for the to fund the Leary lot um, had had some had some weird clause that you couldn't you know use an easement or or anybody else's property. Um, otherwise, that grant money went away, and so the only way we could fund the town could fund the Leary lot is to is to go back to the original um, property line configuration for the purposes of the Leary lot <laughs> construction. And and Chris, I don't know, you know, you could certainly speak to whether it can that A and R could be you know executed in the future to bring everything into compliance once that grant money is you know realized. But um, you know, it's really uh, the sole function is to is to get that get federal funding um, for that project. Yeah, and I, I would I would kind of clarify that the 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 grant funding and the process we had to go through with the Federal Highway Administration just kind of ended up alerting us to the fact that the ANR hadn't been properly executed. Sure. Um, so just just to clarify that point, so I think uh, you know I'll, I'll back up for a second and just say you know obviously the town has been working very closely with Hamshaw to advance this project for years, uh, and we're kind of at the you know. Uh, the final hurdle here. Um, so, you know, as is spelled out in that letter of support from the select board, you know, a variance has to hinge on the shape of the lot. And while the shape of the lot that, um, you know, was created through the land swap with Hamshaw is not in any way unusual, um, the existing, the, the lot with the existing Hamshaw building on it certainly is. And it's, because of that, the way it intersects Elm Street and Railroad Street intersect, um, they don't intersect at a, a regular 90 degree angle. Um, and so that kind of forces any architect to make a choice about how to configure your building. Um, and in this case, um, you know, Hamshaw had configured it so that it was sort of lined up with the existing building, um, which means that it's sort of not fully frontally facing Elm Street. Um, and that's so as a result of that, there is that little piece of the corner of the building that's over the um, the property line or not, excuse me, not over the property line, but over the setback line uh, on the side with the town driveway. So so that's kind of the. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, that's kind of the, the reasoning for, you know, why seeking a variance might make sense here. Obviously, the town, as Jeff alluded to, tried to go another direction and, um, you know, something fell through the cracks there and we didn't get that solution fully implemented. Um, so now we're seeking relief through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, you know, one thing I would also just echo from that letter, you know, the purpose of these setbacks isn't spelled out in our zoning bylaws, often they're for emergency personnel access to a site. Um, they also are for, you know, ensuring that sunlight and airflow can reach neighbors properties unobstructed. In this case, the neighboring property is the town driveway. Um, so we're not too worried about access because, well, there's a driveway and we're also not too worried about airflow or sunlight because it's a driveway. Um, so it definitely doesn't um, derogate from the purpose of the bylaw to have, uh, you know, this building slightly within that setback. Um, and then lastly, I would just note uh, again from the letter 
Um, this is a you know kind of an unusual, at least the the existing Hamshaw parcel is an unusual shape. And so I don't think there's too much concern about, you know, this setting any kind of precedent. This really does have to hang on that unusual shape of that parcel. Um, so this isn't something that's going to result in, um, you know, other property owners seeking a variance under similar circumstances. Yeah, I would agree with you, Mr. Dunn. I appreciate that. I, I think that this is a clear hardship created by the abutter who's was you know what i mean and is okay with it so there's no objection from my point of view um and if any other members of the board have any questions or there's any public comment we can continue uh, i got a quick question um can you go back to the not this slide that you got up but the other one that shows the two buildings and and i get that we're about to put shovels on the ground and so i'm this is m more of a curiosity from the design perspective but it just looks like i guess i'm curious why they they really went for that 20 foot setback from Elm Street, but that whole building looks like you could just move it to be flush with the existing building. Uh, and you'd almost get rid of that, um, that you would have gotten, you get closer to the 10 feet and you would have a little more space at the front and you'd be more flush with the other building. So I don't want to spend a lot of time. I'm just curious from the design folks, why, why it didn't just set back more if there's nothing behind it. Do you know what I'm saying? You just slide that block like you're playing with blocks. Like you just slide yep. that proposed building on top of the existing building in that picture. And if you look at what our handouts for our meeting tonight, there's another picture too that makes it just look like if you just pushed it, you know, you're going to push it away from the uh, that driveway in. I'm not suggesting uh, you do that. I'm just curious from a design perspective why we're pushing it so far to the Elm Street as opposed to a little bit more setback. If anybody can answer it. Sure. I mean, I'll, look, I'll, I'll let Eric I certainly speak to the architecture component, but at least from a site standpoint, I would say it was it was a lot driven by um, dimensionally what we had available and understanding that we wanted to, you know, try to maximize this space in the back and provide as much, you know, off-site parking or on-site parking as, as possible. There's, you know, this, this dimension between the sidewalk and the existing property line was, you know, to make a double-loaded um you know parking lot was the difference of you know a few feet so that was part of it and you know similarly with the front just trying to you know provide access for you know accessible parking and a turnout and all of that so you know you're 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 moving these you know it's like tetris moving these rectangles around with certain dimensions that um you know we we could have ended up with seven spaces but we got 16 and so that seemed like a uh you know a benefit to, to the project. So that somewhat, you know, was, was part of the decision-making process, but I can't speak to the architecture. I'll let, um, yeah, Eric can speak to that, but, um, from a site standpoint, that's, that's part of the rationale. I might also just mention, if I may, uh, yes, a couple of things, the, um, also in the back, uh, there's stormwater drainage happening subsurfacely back there, and that's all permeable pavement. So I think it's also an important to have that area as a catchment area in that back back of the building there. You can see that. And if we start to encroach on that, then now you have cars blocking, you have, I mean, I think it's good to keep that open like that. That's just my personal opinion. But architecturally more important, we're really trying to integrate this into the downtown streetscape. And actually all the buildings beyond are set even forward closer to the street mm -hmm. and that whole architectural um all the facades of downtown have a certain aesthetic and a vocabulary and this this is kind of a gateway you cr you cross the railroad tracks and you're really into downtown you see it from route 510 so we really want to integrate the building into that streetscape and pushing it further back would kind of avoid that because it was never it, a downtown streetscape. You don't have parking pulling up right to the front. You have the the building almost zero the lot line, zero setback um, from the lot line. So this is kind of a basically a halfway compromise of that. But really, the point is to to integrate into the um, into the design of downtown, the existing excuse me, <clears throat> into the existing um, design of downtown what I call downtown, town center. Thank you. <laughs> this historic town center. Thank you.
I don't, I don't know why my computer's not working. I apologize. Otherwise, I would show you the elevations and how the, uh, whole, unless... the whole study we showed to the um, at the planning board explaining that. Yeah, when we did the special permit, we had quite some more information that was given to us as well. Okay. So, yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. Pat, any members of the public uh, asking any questions for the public hearing? We have one person here in the audience. Ma'am, uh, we have a public hearing going for Hampshire Lumber. Um, would you like to speak to that? Mm -hmm. Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm, if, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, if you could use the microphone next to you or one of the microphones up here. I'm sorry. I, I forget that we have people in other places. So I'm sorry. So, yeah. Should I sit here? Or e either way. Here? Yeah. Should I repeat everything? You can just state your name. Oh, Linda Cosenza. It just you, If you just use the microphone close. Oh. Yeah, they're close talking microphones. I wanted to kind of melt into the background. Right. You don't need to speak. I just, if you'd like to yeah, have a public no. hearing, and you're welcome to. Yes, I, I'm wondering that schematic that I saw up there would uh, we could would I have access to it to bring home and look at because I want to know what this is on what side is it near my building? How would it impact me? So you're at 10 and 12? 10, 10 and 12 Elm. Right. So you're going to be impacted more by the parking lot development yes. than, than this project. Right. Um, either way, if you go on the town website, there's a lot of information about the parking lot design. Right. And right. there's a lot of information. You can click on this full meeting packet, like what they're showing up there, or the previous meeting packets for the zoning board. And you can see those mm -hmm. online. Um, if you want some hard copies, you can stop in and see the uh, building inspector's office, Amy. Good. She can provide those to you. Thank you. I would appreciate that because okay. I do like hard copies to take a look at and yeah. and uh, kind of mull over. And I did speak with people about the uh, parking lot in back, yeah. and they were very, very, very kind. Yes. Okay. I, All right. I guess I don't have to be here then, maybe. No, they just, as an abutter, they notify you, but you're not right. required to be here. No. We're required to speak. I wish just, well, right. I wish just, we just uh, want to make sure that if anybody does, they have the opportunity. Right. So, I, you know, uh, I was just worried how it would impact the building and the tenants. Right. Because I try to work with them and the town, you know, as much yeah. as possible, but make sure everybody's happy. We're trying, right? Yeah. I think the parking lot project will, will hopefully add some more parking. So, right, it'll be good. Okay. Excellent. All right. So you're not plowing my building down or anything oh, like that. So. Absolutely not. Okay. Well, no. I think. Then I. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Okay. Uh, motion to close the public hearing and seconded our motion by David Potter to close the public hearing. And I'll take a second on that. Second that. Second by David Sharp. And I'll be all. I'm in favor of that. Adam? Lauren Pontani, I'm in favor. David Potter, aye. Dave Sharp, would you like to vote on that? I'm sorry if I was missing something. There's about uh, 12 baby turkeys just walked in front of my window. Um, <laughs> so I got excited. I had to tell the house. Uh, Dave Sharp, aye. Sorry. Okay. So now that the public hearing is closed, um, does any <laughs> board members have any discussion or questions? I don't see any. Um, I'd make a motion that the applicant has um, 
met the requirements of a hardship um and that i would issue that the board uh zoning board of appeals should issue a variance um based on the application and the information presented in the public hearing i'll second that okay that was second by david potter any further discussion no okay all those in favor i'll start on the computer dave sharp dave sharp aye dave sharp in favor david potter uh aye yes okay laura pontani aye adam sikolowski aye so your variance is approved and thank you for coming in and we wish you the best and amy will be in touch with you on the procedural end thank you All right, Pat, any communication from the other uh, thing on the menu uh, tonight here, the uh, variance for Yankee Candle? I don't see anybody here from them. Really? Nope. Uh, I haven't heard from anybody. Okay, I'll just check my email quick. It's, Bob, uh, you didn't hear from anybody? No, I, not that I'm aware of. No calls or anything. Amy didn't say anything. So. And you checked all the messages that were on Amy's phone? Yeah, Amy also forwarded to me the messages, and I was talking to her today. So I, I'm, I'm assuming I would have heard something if there was something to hear. So Okay. Yeah. I guess the question is, do we open the public hearing and then continue it? I would think uh, with no one present and then skip over it, then it would have to be reposted. Hmm. Huh. Maybe they were confused about the date and time or something. I don't know. I could try quickly texting Amy and see if just double checking. I don't she's on vacation, but she may answer. She's uh moderating concom and I've been oh, in touch that's with right. her. No, yeah. she's available. I've already talked to her. Well, I'll send her a quick text. I haven't run it, run into this before where no one's shown up, so I still don't know the best way to to handle it for them. I don't. I think you're right, Adam, that you have to open it and then continue it and close it. That's my guess. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. I think that not opening it would guarantee that they would have to re refile and then repost in the newspaper. Right. I sent her the text. I'll just see if she, you know, if she gets right back or not. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open it, Bob. Yep. Makes I'm going to make a motion to open uh, item number two, special permit variance, 25 Greenfield Road. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, 27th, 6.30 p.m. to consider a special permit and variance application filed by Yankee Candle Company for additional sign with a total area exceeding 32 square feet. And on property located at 25 Greenfield Road, map 175, lot four, pursuant to zoning bylaw, chapter 179, 3222, and 5222. The application documents are on file with public review at municipal offices during office hours on the town's website, www.deerfieldma.us, in the calendar event. I second that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Are you looking at me to say something? No, I think we're good. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm not. She's not getting right back. Open the public so. hearing um, for the uh, special permit at, at uh, 25 Greenfield Road. There's no one here from the applicant. Um, we can check with any members online. There's nobody else in the building. And then I think um, what we can do is 
take a vote to continue it to our next meeting so the public hearings remains open. Then that way they don't have to refile with the newspaper. Yeah, she might be busy with the other meeting, so she, she's not answering me. But like I said, I, I didn't get any communication from her. Yeah. Presumably the temporary sort of permission that's been given for those two signs they put up will just continue without any need for us to do anything? What, it, wasn't there some kind of temporary thing we did? Right, right. That, that, that's why they're supposed to come back because we gave it to them to the end. Right, yeah, no, yeah, 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 I'm just. What was the date, do you remember? Was it to the? The original? Like the, till they had to come back, I'm just thinking. I think I we gave it the with... date of September 1st. Oh, okay, so there's still plenty of time. I, th I thought that's what we did. and. Then, Told them to come back in June. Minutes, yeah. Or that was back in March. Where did we say just come to this meeting? No. No, he refiled. This is uh Yeah, I I mean I saw him in the office he and he in came in. He refiled yeah. to come to this meeting as they were required to. Right. Um because it's a new application with a signature and a date of 6 6. Yeah, he, he was there just a couple weeks ago. Uh, he either say, forgot or something happened. I think he just plain forgot. Yeah. It says, you know, we're asking to renew and make permanent the special permit for the variance, permit and variance for additional signage. On the lot, the signage is part of a larger advertising effort, special ongoing new brand taking place. You can't approve it without him being there, right? Oh, well, I'm not. No, well, we have to see because I have questions. I mean, it, it seems like it's the same. It could. Amy texted back that she had not heard from him, but because she's been juggling so much, it could be her bad, and she forgot to notify him of the exact date. <laughs> So it could be, it could be something on the town. Well, but she's, she's we have not sure. Hearing open, right? So we can uh, make a motion to continue it to our next regularly scheduled meeting. And as long as it happens, I think in that for, we can keep a public hearing open for ninety days. So yeah, she, she said she would have thought they would have known, but you know, I guess they could have forgot or could have, you know, could have been. Something gorgeous evening. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make a motion to continue the public hearing to the next regularly scheduled ZBA meeting. I'll second that. Whoop. Go ahead. Who's first? Second by David Sharp. All those in favor? David Potter, yes. Laura Pontani, yes. Adam Dave Sarkowski, yes. And Dave Sharp, yes. Uh, can I just ask a little question about this? Yeah. Or, I just maybe for next time, and maybe this is for Bob too. Um, you know, the the special permit of the variance was for these larger signs. I get, I get that. Um, but when I went and read the sign part of our bylaws, it talks about two signs. And when I drive by there, they've got they got a bunch of signs up. They've got the two big ones on the building, and then they have these other two, um, you know, they're much sort of longer. Sorry, not much longer. They're smaller and rectangular and narrow. There's one just as you turn in, and then there's one somewhere else in that parking lot. It's, yeah. I, I don't want to be there picky or anything, but is that something that should be um, dealt I with? I don't know if there are more directional signs. I'd have to read through it and look at it from that point of view. Yeah, but, I don't think, you know. I don't know if they qualify as directional. I think directional is more if you're somewhere else directing you to there, as opposed to directing you across a parking lot. Um, 
But I, I, I thought about that too. But I just wondered because the, the, they've been up for a while. And um, again, the whole thing about precedence and other people wanting to put up a bunch of signs. And um, they certainly had a bunch of signs there for a while. I would be curious to, to know um, the date of the updated sign bylaw and then when some of those signs were where they put up if they were put up prior to that change yeah, i'd have to really think about i'd have to give it some thought too uh when was yeah. the bylaw updated sorry to interrupt i i don't know off the top of my head dave that would okay. be that would Did be because the you know if you look at the original yankee candle signs that would be you know 40 years ago no, these are all the very temporary signs just about the, um, I'm sorry, what's it called? All those yeah. Newell brand things that they're trying to sell from the, what I thought of as the health center, health club. Right. Okay. So they're not Yankee candle signs. They're, they're all related to this. The outlet. The, the outlet. outlet. Yeah. They're the exact same sign. They're just smaller and in the, in the entryway and in the parking lot somewhere. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll give it some thought before the okay. next hearing so we could address it if, you know, then. Yeah. To, like maybe they should remove the smaller signs if they're going to get approved, you know, the final approval for the larger signs or something right. to that effect. I, I, I think that's what I was probably getting at is that they were probably there and then they put these big ones up. And so now we've got four signs instead of two. Yeah, you know, I agree. And the other thing, you know, I there was a complaint that was forwarded to the building inspector by myself about another sign in town um out at the end of a driveway and it's something that amy and i have talked about putting on the planning board's radar about an upgraded uh sign bylaw yeah um, it's also it would be nice because it is kind of convoluted in certain areas which you know we give the permits but the it's the task of the planning board to change the bylaws regarding this stuff um so it's you know, and I, I'll, there's all the gas station in Old Deerfield. I mean, I think there's, you know, the town's done some things with special overlay districts. And I think that a historic overlay district in Old Deerfield, you know, with some stricter regulations on signage and stuff like that would be a good thing for the town to help support historic Deerfield um, in that area. And, you know, there's things in historic Deerfield that are, you know, I would that become unsightly, um, and you know they might it might benefit them to be thought of in a sign by law. Yeah. Especially like those a, temporary signs that. Yeah, pop. that's where I'd like a clear definition, like a banner versus a temporary sign and a real sign, and like those things pop up all over the place. I mean, not just Deerfield; they're everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I kind of get it. It's like quick, cheap, you know, temporary advertising, but then they stay up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one thing if you're having your grand opening for a week, but, you know, other than that, you know, I'm not really a huge fan of the temporary signage. All right. That's all I, I have be. on that. Um, I know a member asked for, and we were provided a bunch of older decisions, and I, want to make sure that people got those and if they thought they were helpful or or not amy put a lot of work into that i think she yeah she did put it on here for number six um so it's on the agenda it was just on as a discussion item she didn't add the actual email stuff i see yeah I think what I was uh, concerned about was we have talked about the parameters, you know, conditions that we've put on certain special permits. Um, and if that is um, available just as a, you know, guideline um, uh, and for us to be able to kind of maintain a standard, because um, I know in meetings we can, we kind of recollect but we don't exactly have it in front of us. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Yep. I see what you mean. Like, yeah. And we had talked about that before standard ones that everybody, and then, you know, you can get, as long as the applicant agrees, you know, you can get as creative as the applicant 
you know, on some of those conditions, mm -hmm. but yeah, I see what you mean on like some of the like standard ones that we go each time that we normally yeah, ask the, for. The, the issue at that time was the, the Airbnb and that we right. had given maybe some set of conditions that were slightly different to different people. And, yeah. um, uh, you know, just for us to be able to have as a committee, um, those decisions, I mean, I, I guess it's now our norm to make, um, conditions. It, it is. I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that, you know, and Bob can speak to this because he, and actually, if you ever stop by Chris Dunn, the town planner is a pretty good resource on stuff because he's seen stuff in different communities where, um, they have either a template like that or they are their bylaws are a little bit more clearer on what you can and can't do in some certain areas and other places are even less clear so the there's also a lot of legislation as bob and i are talking about that is in the pipeline and you don't know with legislation that will allow a lot of stuff in communities more by right and less by going through special permitting processes. Yeah, and if the ADU that. thing goes through the legislation, that's like no more single family zoning in Massachusetts. Yeah, no, I think really what I'm looking for is is if there's a um, a way to compile um, kind of a, a summary or cheat sheet of our decisions um, who we've, you know, I mean, who, who keeps track of this? You know, is there a historical, you know, because as part of our um, uh, work as a board, I think it's good for us to see these parameters. You know, maybe maybe it's work that can be done outside of the committee where, you know, some somebody needs can work with uh, administrative assistant and, you know, clerical people that 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 take care of um, uh you know, keeping the documentation mm -hmm. so that we could have something that's, that's beneficial towards um, keeping track of um, these parameters. Cause when we're in the meeting, it's hard to, to, you know, remember all of these good ideas as far as conditions go yeah. and, and to be, to be kind of somewhat uniform or at least to recognize what has been somewhat standard. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, what's going to happen here if I'm reappointed or not. So um, it'll be an issue for next meeting, but I'd be more than happy to ask Amy to um, try to come up with something and to be, if you know, make sure that the next meeting is a time that she's available and that's on the agenda. So board members can talk to her directly or she can present something Um you know, that would be a, a helpful guide. And, and then that way, you know, the ball's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anything else, sir? I'm happy to adjourn. Nothing for me. Nothing for me. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 716. I'll second that motion. Okay, second by Laura. David Potter, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. Adam Sokolowski, aye. Laura Pantani, aye. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a great night. Great. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Good night.